All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's PCOB's open meeting. I know for the record that all board members are present. I want to welcome all who have joined us here today in person and also those participating via webcast. The business before the board today is a staff recommendation that the board issue for public comment, a concept release outlining a potential approach to revising the PCOB's quality control standards. To present the recommendation, I will turn to our chief auditor, Megan Zietzman. Ms. Zietzman. Thank you, Chairman Dunkey and board members Brown, Kaiser, Despade, and Gerada. Today, I'm very pleased to recommend that the board issue for public comment a concept release outlining a potential approach to revising the PCOB's quality control or QC standards. Uh, before I overview the release, um, I would like to acknowledge the people within the PCOB who've played really key roles in its development. So firstly, from my team in the Office of the Chief Auditor, or OCA, I'd like to call out Keith, Keith Wilson, who's led the project since its inception. Um, as an aside, I would also like to note that Keith recently completed 15 years of dedicated service to the PCOB. During this time, he's really led or participated in most of the significant rulemaking related to, stand, to our standards. Um, I don't know for sure how many open meetings Keith has attended, but um, today will be the last one as he is retiring at the end of the year. Uh, so his wisdom and experience will really be, be missed. Next up are Jessica Watts, Lynette Clannadinst, and Karen, we Karen Wiedemann, um, as well as a general thank you to the rest of OCA for contributing to the project at the earlier stages, pitching in to help as we finalized everything, and really just keeping all the other wheels turning as the QC team was devoted to its project. It really was a team effort. Um, I also have to thank our colleagues from the other divisions in the PCOB for their significant com contributions, and in particular, Tori Matus and her team from the Office of External Affairs, um, especially Brandy Boykin, who really led the efforts to design a document with a new look and feel. John Cook and Jennifer Williams in the Office of General Counsel, our colleagues in Inspections and Enforcement, and our colleagues in the Office of Economic and Risk Analysis, who I should point out have already started working on some of the economic analysis that will support um, a potential proposal down the line. Finally, I'd like to thank Mark Panucci and his team, um, as well as others at the, at the Securities and Exchange Commission, for their support, insights, and timely assistance. So with that, let me uh, talk a little bit about the, uh, the concept release that you will be considering today. Um, it outlines an approach to revising the PCOB's QC standards for registered firms. We believe that an effective QC system at a firm is a key foundational element in promoting the performance of consistent high-quality audits. Requiring firms to establish strong QC systems is therefore really key to the board's objective of shifting towards a more preventive regulatory approach. As you know, the PCOB's existing QC standards were originally developed by the ASCPA and were adopted by the board in its early days. We've not made significant revisions to those standards, so they really don't reflect many of the changes of today's environment, um, including in particular the evolving use of technology, changes in the scope and scale of international networks, as well as in how networks operate and are governed, as well as other changes in firm practices and, and in, in especially in relation to monitoring, remediation, and other QC-related activities. So this concept release outlines a potential path for updating and improving our standards. Um, it's informed by what we've learned through our outreach, through oversight, through review of relevant academic literature, and through consideration of developments and trends in areas like quality management, enterprise risk management, internal control and corporate governance, and the related frameworks. We've gathered a lot of information through these activities, and that, lead us to lead, that all leads us to believe that an integrated risk-based framework might be an appropriate approach, approach for us to use in updating our standards. Um, the approach outlined in the concept release is premised on using the International Auditing and Assurance Standards Board standard, ISQM1, as a starting point. ISQM1 is an active project for the IAASB. Um, the IAASB is currently responding to feedback on a proposal that they issued earlier this year. Um, ISQM1 is built on a risk-based framework, and it's designed to focus firms' attention on proactively identifying and responding to risks. Uh, that may affect engagement quality. So we'll be closely monitoring the IAASB's finalization of this standard. We anticipate that the board would seek to avoid unnecessary differences between a PCOB QC standard and the international standard. Uh, many firms will have to follow both the PCOB standard as well as ISQM1, um, or a standard that is similar to ISQM1, which is how we understand the AICPA's QC standards will evolve. 
So given the foundational nature of QC um, and related standards, we understand that significant differences in those standards would be very challenging and potentially um, imp impossible for firms to manage, and the effort to do so would potentially even detract from, uh, from audit quality. So we also understand that some of the larger firms have already begun updating their QC systems to reflect more risk-based approaches, um, in part in anticipation of the adoption of ISQM1. The concept release does, however, outline a number of areas where different requirements may be needed in, in our um, kind of in our world. These would be things to align our requirements with US federal securities law and SEC and PCOB requirements, retain important topics from our current standards that are not addressed in ISQM1 or are not addressed at the same level of detail, uh, to address emerging issues that we've identified through our oversight activities, and to provide more definitive direction where, where we believe that is appropriate to drive appropriate implementation. We also believe that any future standard needs to be scalable. Um, the firm needs to be able to as tailor its QC system appropriately based on its size, based on the nature of engagements that it, um, that it performs, and all of that would need to be commensurate with the risks to quality. So the concept release asks a wide range of questions regarding the basic approach, which is, which is what I've kind of outlined, to revising our standards, um, including on scalability. It also asks more specific questions about each of the components of the system um, and on specific areas where potential requirements might be considered that would be incremental or alternative to the ISQM1 approach. We're suggesting a 90-day comment period uh, for all interested stakeholders to provide input on the release. So to conclude, the staff recommends that the board issue for public comment a concept release outlining a potential approach to revising the PCOB's quality control standards in substantially the form presented. <clears throat> we'll be happy to answer any questions that the board may have about the release. Thank you. Thank you very much, Megan, and thank you to the rest of the quality control project team. We'll turn now to uh, uh, board member statements. I'll begin and we'll proceed in order of uh, seniority. Today, I'm pleased to support the staff's recommendation that we issue the concept release before us today. Audit firm quality control systems serve an essential role in the U.S. capital markets. Strong systems of quality control provide the foundation for audit firms to execute consistent, high-quality audits in accordance with PCOB standards. When firms effectively design and operate their quality control systems, those systems promote more consistent compliance with our standards and thereby benefit investors. At present, the PCOB uses the quality control standards that it adopted in 2003 from the AICPA's then existing standards. As written and implemented, I am concerned that those standards do not do enough to address the current audit landscape and the complexity inherent in it. They also do not reflect recent market-based trends in effective quality management practices. Moreover, based on our established inspections history, I believe our standards could do more to prompt firms to take a proactive, preventative approach to managing audit quality. The audit and the audit market have fundamentally changed since we first adopted our current quality control standards. Technology enabled by digitization and proliferation of data has changed how, when, and where firms deliver audit services. Audit firms have modernized their corporate structures and leadership and governance approaches. The largest firms have vastly increased the scope and scale of their complex international footprints. They have changed their audit methodologies and refined their approaches to accepting and retaining clients. And they have transformed how they monitor audit quality across their portfolios, both domestically and internationally. Although slower, change can also meaningfully impact smaller firms and how they conduct audits. The PCOB's own oversight work has also significantly impacted the landscape since 2003. The PCOB has issued many new or revised auditing standards designed to promote audit quality to individual audits, including standards related to audit documentation, auditing internal control over financial reporting, performing risk assessments, auditing estimates, using the work of specialists, and performing engagement quality reviews. We also now have more than 15 years of inspections related experience and corresponding findings. Those findings reveal not only concerns with compliance with our standards on individual audit engagements, they also show continued weaknesses in firms' quality control systems. Taken as a whole, our experience suggests that modernizing our quality control standards will help to, further, to drive further improvements in audit quality. Against the backdrop of all these significant changes in the audit and audit market, I believe the current quality control standards may no longer be sufficiently resilient to remain relevant. It is appropriate to revisit and modernize those standards now. 
In considering what approach we should take to address the changes that have occurred, I am mindful that we, do not, that we are not alone in considering whether and how to revise our quality control standards. The IAASB recently proposed a standard, ISQM1, that sets forth a comprehensive framework for firm quality control systems. ISQM1 would require firms to proactively identify and respond to those risks that may have an impact on engagement quality. The proposed standard includes specific requirements related to current developments not addressed in existing PCOB standards. Based on information we have gathered through our oversight, outreach, and research activities, I am persuaded that revised PCOB quality control standards should be built on an integrated risk-based framework similar to proposed ISQM1. A strong system of quality control should direct an audit firm to identify, assess, and respond to risks to audit quality proactively. When firms focus on identifying and mitigating the specific quality-related risks they face, audit quality can and should improve. Aside from being risk-based, I believe any revised standards in this area should be scalable. Firms of all sizes and complexity should be able to tailor their specific systems of quality control to address the unique risks they face. Rather than issue a proposed rule for public comment, we believe it is appropriate to obtain broad feedback from our stakeholders at, a thresh at the threshold of our project. This is a complex area and we want to ensure we hear from all impacted. I strongly encourage all of our stakeholders to provide that feedback. We can only strike the right balance in this important area if we hear from investors, audit committees, and audit firms, and others. In short, we look forward to hearing from you. Mr. Brown. Today, the board votes on a concept release concerning standards of quality control for firms that audit public companies and SEC registered broker dealers. The importance of this step cannot be overstated. We depend upon and benefit from quality control in most things that we do. We need quality control over the food we eat, the medicines we take, the automobiles we drive, and the planes we board. As we all know, when quality control fails, the results can be disastrous. The same is true with respect to financial reporting. Reliable financial reporting is critical to advancing the public interest and ensuring confidence in our capital markets. Trusted, reliable financial reporting depends on rigorous independent auditing, which in turn relies on an effective QC system. The critical importance of an effective QC system to audit quality makes these standards uniquely important to investors and the public. Quality control relates to a firm's practice as a whole and is intended to, among other things, ensure that audits are appropriately staffed by highly trained personnel who are capable of assessing relevant risks and have the necessary resources to conduct audits. Quality control does more than provide a set of upfront assurances. Firms monitor the results to ensure audit quality, sometimes in real time. In considering a potential framework for revisions, to the QC standards, our concept release relies heavily on the International Standard on Quality Management 1, or ISQM 1, a draft proposal issued by the IAASB. ISQM 1 is a useful starting point. The board, however, recognizes that ISQM 1 must be adjusted to meet the particular circumstances of the U.S. markets. The concept release discusses a number of areas of importance to investors and the public. Accordingly, I'll provide a more detailed statement on the PCOB's website. However, in the interest of time this morning, I wish to emphasize three of those areas. Independent oversight, market disclosure and accountability, and assessing and improving effectiveness. With respect to independent oversight, corporate governance has undergone significant changes since the adoption of the first QC standard in the United States in the 1970s. The need for and role of independence in connection with the financial disclosure process is now widely recognized and widely implemented. Listed companies must include independent directors on their boards and have informed and independent audit committees with financial expertise to oversee the audit process. These safeguards strengthen trust by investors and the public in financial disclosure and mitigate concerns over possible misalignment between the interests of management and shareholders. Audit firms have increasingly adopted these types of safeguards. In 2008, the Advisory Committee on the Auditing Profession, a bipartisan commission convened by Treasury Secretary Paulson, issued a report 
the ACAP report, and recommended consideration be given to the addition of independent directors with full voting power on auditing firm boards and or advisory boards with meaningful governance responsibilities. Since then, two of the largest audit firms have added, added independent directors to their boards. At least three others use advisory groups with independent members. A number of countries have adopted rules that require audit firms to have independent directors. The contemplated revision of our QC standards provides an opportunity for a renewed examination of the role of these safeguards with respect to audit quality. Commercial incentives may sometimes conflict with the goal of audit quality. Independent oversight of firms' QC systems can help mitigate these concerns. For example, the concept release discusses the need to provide adequate resources for the design, implementation, and operation of a QC system. Safeguards, including an independent oversight mechanism, may provide investors and the public with greater confidence in the resource allocation decisions. The same may be true with respect to other aspects of quality control, including the annual review of the QC system, the effectiveness of remediation of QC concerns, and the integration of audit quality into the system of incentives and rewards for firm personnel. I encourage comments on these issues. I've included the relevant questions from the concept release on governance issues in my written remarks. Let me turn to accountability. Ensuring the effectiveness of quality control requires accountability. Transparency is an essential element of accountability. Investors and the public cannot hold accountable what they don't know. Currently, audit firms in the United States are not required to disclose to the public information on their QC systems. Calls have arisen for greater transparency by audit firms. The ACAP report recommended that the larger firms publish an annual report that includes key indicators of audit quality and effectiveness. The PCOB's investor advisory group called for similar disclosure by audit firms. Audit committees apparently receive this type of information on a routine basis. Comments on disclosure would, I believe, be particularly valuable as we consider next steps. With respect to contents of firms' disclosure, in my view, investors and the public would benefit from objective, reliable, and uniform measures of audit quality. Some measures frequently referred to as such measures, frequently referred to as audit quality indicators, are increasingly appearing in proxy statements in connection with shareholder ratification of audit firms and used in academic research examining their relationship to audit quality. Moreover, investors and shareholders rely on these quality indicators in connection with their investment and voting decisions. The PCOB has devoted significant attention to this area. In 2015, the PCOB issued a concept release identifying 28 possible AQIs. In 2018, the PCOB sought comment on this subject in connection with our strategic plan. The issue has been discussed by the PCOB's Standing Advisory Group and Investor Advisory Group. Other regulators around the world are exploring AQIs and many audit firms are using the measures. Academic analysis increasingly has shown a relationship between AQIs and audit quality. We would, in my opinion, benefit from comments on whether AQIs should, as part of the QC standards, be subject to disclosure and the types of AQIs that would be particularly useful. With respect to effectiveness, a central theme of ISQM1 is the need for continuous improvement in the QC system. ISQM1 calls for no less than an annual evaluation. For a review to be effective, however, there needs to be a robust feedback loop that informs firms of areas for improvement. The concept release contemplates that firms will receive feedback from a number of sources, including risk assessments, internal monitoring, and inspections by regulators such as the PCOB. Missing from the list is the vital role for investors and the public. Investor outreach by audit firms could facilitate the collection of views on market risks and in turn drive continual improvement in QC systems. At least three countries have developed audit firm governance codes that call for investor outreach. With respect to risk assessment, the concept release does not specify the types of risk that should be examined. Risk can arise at a market, industry, or individual issuer or broker-dealer level and can include those that create greater incentive to alter earnings. 
Similarly, with respect to internal monitoring, the concept release does not specify the factors that should be considered by firms in their selection of the particular engagements or for internal inspections to assess the effectiveness of the QC system. We have questions, though, on all of those topics. Academic research suggests that the process used to select audit engagements for internal inspection is often predictable, which may impair investor confidence in a firm's internal monitoring. Comments on ways to strengthen the feedback loop, including the role of investors and the public, would, in my opinion, be very useful. In conclusion, let me emphasize the importance of this concept release. On first blush, this may be, appear to be just a matter of plumbing for an audit. Quite the contrary. The direction of any future standard concerning quality control has the ability to meaningfully improve audit quality for the benefit of investors and the public. I would like to end by thanking the PCOB staff for their hard work that went into this concept release. These efforts involved a constant process of revision, something that often required late hours and changes right up until the last minute. I want to thank all of those that helped in our different divisions, but wanted to particularly mention Megan Zietzman, Keith Wilson, Jessica Watts, Lynette Clindenst, Jennifer Williams, and Karen Wiedemann. This release is our first that uses modern graphic design to enhance readability by the public. In that regard, I want to thank Brandy Boykin and others in our Office of External Affairs for the hours spent designing a new layout. I want to thank the staff at the SEC as well for providing their insights and perspectives on this concept release. Thank you, and I look forward to receiving commenters' thoughts and views on what future PCOB QC standards should be. Thank you, Mr. Kaiser. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I fully support the concept release on a potential approach to revisions to PCOB, PCOB quality control standards. As I like to say, the PCOB's current quality control standards have been around since my hair was a different color, and there is more of it. However, audit firms and the audit environment where they operate are different now. Firms' use of technology has evolved and expanded. Management and organizational structures have changed. There are different practice structures and more use of international networks. Although these developments affect audit practices and the quality control standards that support them, our current standards do not necessarily account for them. It is time to take a fresh look at our quality control standards and update them where necessary. There are many ways to define quality, including degree of excellence, freedom from defects, conformance to requirements, and fitness for use. Under any of these definitions, an audit firm with an effective audit quality control system will consistently perform high quality audits. Although the U.S. capital markets drive our mandate to achieve such consistency across global networks, it is crucial that all firms in a network start from the same place. I support the approach of using the International Auditing Standards Board's recently proposed standard as the starting point. Of course, there may be differences as appropriate for firms performing engagements under PCOB standards and rules. However, requiring a global network of firms to implement markedly different sets of standard quality control standards would not advance audit quality. In fact, unnecessary differences in quality control standards could impede the advancement of audit quality. We must also develop standards that are nimble and scalable for all registered firms. Scalability will allow a firm to tailor its quality control system based on its size, complexity, and nature of audits it performs. I also support the concept lease to begin the standard setting process and commend Megan Zietzman, our chief auditor, and her team for recommending it. Starting with this vehicle, vehicle instead of a proposed standard confirms the board's commitment to enhancing transparency and accessibility through proactive stakeholder engagement. We will engage our stakeholders early in the standard setting process, allowing us to hear and consider all views as we move forward. Finally, I would also like to thank Megan and her team and all of our divisions and offices who contributed to this concept release for their hard work and dedication. Thank you as well to our colleagues at the Securities and Exchange Commission for their feedback and oversight. I look forward to hearing from our stakeholders on this important project. Thank you, Mr. Desparty. 
Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, I will echo many of the comments that uh, that you've heard already this morning. Um, you know, I, I strongly support the board's focus on improving our uh, existing quality control standards. Uh, Well-designed and effectively operating quality control standards are fundamental to ensuring that audits are consistently performed at a high level of quality. I believe the concept released before us today is an important step forward in our move towards a more preventative regulatory approach. And I believe if we do this well, uh, this could help drive a step change in improved audit quality. Since we adopted our, account, our existing standards, and you've heard a lot about this already, uh, the financial reporting and auditing environment has indeed changed, uh, in some cases significantly. Uh, there are expanded and more complex accounting and disclosure requirements that the firms are auditing. There, are, uh, there have been major changes in technology. Uh, audit firm structures, as you've heard, and service delivery models have changed. And across all industries, corporate governance, enterprise risk, internal control, and quality management concepts and frameworks have evolved uh, also significantly. In recent years, audit firms, especially the larger firms, have devoted increased attention to their quality control systems. And while that is certainly positive, the focus on quality is not consistent across firms, and the reality is we continue to find uh, too many deficiencies in our inspections. So now is the right time for us to bring our standards up to date and to require firms to more consistently incorporate effective quality control elements into their practices. Today's concept release seeks feedback on possible elements of a strengthened audit quality control framework, many of which Jay uh, highlighted. And that includes elements, as Jay highlighted, that are not fully addressed in our current standards. I particularly encourage stakeholders to provide us feedback in the areas of governance, risk assessment, monitoring, continuous improvement, and firm quality reporting, because I believe that these are areas in which our existing standards can most be improved. And I more fully detail my thoughts there in a speech that I gave this fall, which you can find on our website. Regarding our, our approach, I agree with using the IAASB's proposed ISQM1 as a starting point for our consideration. As has been mentioned, regional and global firms are increasingly managing audit quality on a network-wide centralized basis. And so, as has been said, I agree unnecessary differences between our standards and international standards could detract from audit quality by distracting firms and increasing uh, engagement execution risk. Stakeholder input will be helpful to me and to us to focus us on the appropriate areas of differences for our standards to address unique U.S. requirements and to best ensure high audit quality. Of note, consistent with the proposed ISQM1, the concept release envisions, as has been also stated, an integrated risk-based approach, similar to the COSO integrated framework that many companies use with respect to their internal controls over financial reporting. Not only is this a scalable kind of framework, but I believe that in how it's been applied uh, by managements relative to internal controls of our financial reporting, I think over the years, there's widespread consensus that the quality of U.S. financial reporting has significantly improved since companies have increased their attention to their internal controls. And indeed, as a former corporate controller, I saw firsthand the importance of a well-designed and effectively operating control system. That is why I'm really passionate about, I'm excited about this project that we're kicking off here today. By strengthening our quality control standards, we have the opportunity to similarly promote sustainably improved audit quality. I therefore look forward to and encourage stakeholder input on the concepts that we're presenting in this release. In closing, I want to echo the recognition and thanks to the many staff in the office of the Chief Auditor and across all of our divisions and at the SEC for developing today's proposal and moving this important project forward. I also want to thank our advisory groups and the many other stakeholders who over the years have helped inform our thinking about quality control. Thank you, Ms. Dorado.
<clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I will echo Dwayne's echo. <laughs> and, um, but at the risk of repeating myself, I'll just quote my father, who's an engineer, that repetition, repetition, repetition is important and <laughs> indicates emphasis. And so with that, I would just like to first note that I, too, agree and understand that a firm's functioning quality control system speaks to the heart of what the PCOB statutory mandate is. And that is if a firm's audit quality control system is functioning as intended, then a firm will better and can and should actually facilitate an informative, accurate, and independent audit report, which is so crucially important so that our investors can rely upon them. Obviously, as been noted before, is that since the creation of the PCOB, audit quality has indeed improved. But based on recent experience, we are seeing that some of the audit quality has leveled off. And as been mentioned before, is that there's been some inconsistency with respect to audit quality amongst our firms. And I think that just leads us to believe that more needs to be done, not just with respect to our firms themselves and how they in, um, engage with their, with their issuers or their broker dealers, but also what can the PCOB do to address this issue, which is why it's so crucially important that we are here today and it is my honor to support the concept release on audit quality control systems and to be able to support it. I, also appreciate that we are leveraging off of the work of the IAASB. I think it's really important that we recognize that our firms do engage in international um, corporate transactions. Our capital markets are global in nature, and they are going to be abiding by you know, similar rule books here and abroad. So to the extent we can have conformity to international standards, that's really important because we want consistency. But I also appreciate that our concept release also notes that our jurisdiction is unique and that we have our own statutory mandates so that there are possibly a additional requirements that should be overlaid on our firms and that there should be discretion on how a jurisdiction would actually execute or implement an international standard. I also think that our concept release um, approaches a nice balance of having a risk-based approach. I think we've learned from previous experience that a one-size-fits-all regulation is not the most effective, and we want to be able to build in flexibility for our firms to be able to implement a standard based on the size and complexity of the institution. So all that being said, I'm really proud of the framework that's being brought here today, but we can always build upon improvement. So I very much look forward and encourage our stakeholders to respond to our solicitation of comments. As Jay and Dwayne noted, there's a number of questions on a number of a variety of specific issues that should be addressed, and so I strongly encourage everybody to answer some, if not all, of the questions, and I'll very much look forward to reading them. And in the entrance of, uh, interest of brevity, I will just um, wrap up with a conclusion for thank you, Megan, to you and your team from the Office of the Chief Auditor. I know how hard and dedicated you've all been working. I want to thank John and his team in the General Counsel's Office and our Office of the Economic and Risk Analysis for all their contributions of how we got here today. And then also recognize the assistance from our colleagues at the Securities and Exchange Commission, all of whom were a significant um, part of the team that brought the concept release before us today. And on a personal note, if I may, I'd like to recognize Rob Ravis, who was gracious enough to stay on as advisor and help me in transition, and whose insights and counsel were invaluable. I will miss you, but I look forward to continuing to work with you when you return to the Office of the Chief Auditor. So thank you. Thank you all very much for those remarks. And now we'll move to adoption of the concept release. All in favor of approving the staff's recommendation that we issue for public comment a concept release outlining a potential approach to revising the PCOB's quality control standards, say aye. 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 All opposed, say no. Seems the ayes have it. <laughs> and the concept release is adopted. That is uh, all we have for today, so we are adjourned. Thank you so much.